Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm St. Katie 4 and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity, where last time we realised we'd got pretty much as far as we could go in the Endless Path. So we decided after running out once again of camping supplies, we're going to head back do some other missions and level up before we return for a third dive down. Looking at the quests we've got, I'm going to see where Dryfor Village is in a moment because we need to go there to carry on with the Laden Key operatives and we need to also speak to the Animancers, who I believe we have been there once before. And then once we've done all that, we need to head back to Lady Webb and tell her what we found. So, okay, okay. I'm going to the map first. If I can find Dryford Village and get there, we will. If not, it's back into the main city and... See if I can remember where them animancers are. Ah, okay, there's the village. Okay, it's not too far. We've actually been somewhat towards it, actually. So, you know what? Yeah, screw it. Let's go to the village. Let's go somewhere new. 20 hours, apparently, just to get down to the gorge. Oh, lovely. And when we get here, yeah, the weather has changed. Great. Right, the question is though, which way are we meant to be going? So, I'm assuming this is meant to be the path. And of course, yes, there would be someone right here. Fine. You know, you can't go anywhere, can we, without getting into a fight? Okay, okay. Everybody get into position. Huh? Oh, Bloody hell. Right. Okay, okay. Just a bunch of druids. It's Ready, fine. Watcher. Let's just hit them with everything we lead. got. Okay, right. There we go. Everybody's eh? dead. Apart from us. What's good? Took a little bit of a knock there near the end because the last one decided... They were just going to start throwing... Oh, wow, okay. Lightning at us left, right, and centre. But... Okay, a fine battle axe. Flail. Okay, it's just fine. But, who knows, you might actually have a use for it. And bloody hell, that's a lot of money. Okay. Thank you very much. And... Just another bolt. Okay, is that everything? Elder Lion Fang. Okay. Well, that wasn't me. No problem. Okay, okay. Well, in that case, let's just keep on going. We can explore this area thoroughly another time. Oh, jeez. Okay, a bit further along and there's another corpse. So, what have we got? Ooh, Winged Helm. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Oh, and um, before I forget, yes, I didn't do it last week because I'd actually recorded last week's episode before I'd read the comments of the week before. And I almost forgot today to do it. There you go. You asked for it, you get it. We're having big head mode on. At least for now, anyway. So, right, let's carry on, shall we? And, yeah. Let's see if I can find my way through here. And we might as well grab a few other bits as we're going. Okay, made it to the, the other side. But, I'm intrigued what is actually here. So, you know what? If I remember, on the way back, we'll search this area properly. But for now, as I say, yeah, off to the village. Okay, so find somebody in town who knows about... Oh, okay, 
Salisha's returned. Plenty of experience. Very nice. Right, quickly look at that. Yeah, I need to speak to people. Okay. Merchant ship was sunk by pirates of the eastern coast. Before the ship collapsed into the waves, the pirates made off with a variety of precious treasures, many of which were experimental animacy implements. Okay. Okay, that's the bit we've already read. So, here we go. After travelling north from Godhammer, Silesia arrived in the Red, Red Sea and Port City. Several of the pirates had landed there and sold much of their stolen booty. Tips and rumours from merchants and criminal elements led Silesia to the Bone Isles, a small archipelago of... Eh, northwest of Red Cars. The more foolhardy pirates put up a fight, but most of them fled with small scraps of cargo. In the end, Silesia managed to recover over half of what was stolen. One item, a small curious divining bell, went unclaimed by the merchants that had paid for the recovery. Okay. Oh, okay. A helmet that just actually does something. Right, defense against poison attacks, defense against dragon breath. But minus one perception. Okay. But, um... Keep an eye on that then. And actually, you know what? We're doing pretty well with money. So... Let's have a look at... An upgrade or two. You know what? Yeah. Let's get the curio shop done. Although, hmm. Yeah, we'll do that one. We'll work on the other stuff later on. Two days, fine. That can get on in the background. Now, hello, good people. Oh, you've all got big heads as well. Oh, okay. Yes, you wish to speak. Good day, stranger. You've recently come to Dryford. I take it I don't suppose you saw a young elven noblewoman on the road. I'm stuck in this wretched place with the rest of my unit until we find her. No, I'm not. Okay, who is she? Lady Alice. She's the daughter of Lord Nestor, and she's gone missing. Perhaps you could speak with Lord Harrand at the inn. He'll be grateful for the assistance, and, I, and it could be the villagers who'll open up to you more than they have to us. Great! Haven't been in town more than a minute and already people are asking us to find damsels in distress. Right, let's get exploring. Oh, okay. Just been going around literally clicking on everyone and most of them have been, yeah, just generic things. But a grieving mother. This middle-aged middle -aged peasant woman is dressed in a brown leather cloth draped down to her knees. Her hands are working at separating stringy, colourless vegetables in a pile before her, stripping the head off long, fibrous stems with a paring knife. She discards the stem one by one, placing the heads of the veg onto a small cradle-like basket in front of her. She doesn't greet you. You're not even. Know you don't even know if she knows you're there. Okay. Um. I think we should leave her, really, but, you know. Yes, let's be polite. Excuse me. The woman doesn't respond. She keeps stripping the head from the veg with a steady rhythm. She may be deaf. There's no indication she heard you. Okay, we stood here. At first, she seems like nothing more than a middle-aged woman. Unremarkable, maybe less stern than most who seem more focused on the weaving in her lap than her surroundings, yet you suddenly notice she's not stripping the veg before her any longer. She's weaving, and the veg pots are now missing. She still pays no mind. Her brown locks torn and snagged from lack of washing, like many townsfolk you've seen. There's a strange blur to her. Even the motion of her hand seems to be playing with threads that lack colour and shape that lack interest. It may be that she is half-minded or deaf, 
but something feels wrong as you watch her knitting takes on an odd cadence and you have a terrible suspicion that something lurks beneath what your eyes are showing you okay this could go wrong but keep focusing the brown hair is long almost impossibly to the length of her hands as you follow the streams of her locks downwards the hair becomes long and black splitting off into threads of black and silver and wrapping around her hands she's forming a soul cradle with the thread braiding a net in front of you each finger long and sharp like a series of knitting needles almost hypnotic the silver and black strands of her hair weave together with silver some word i'm not even going to try and pronounce as a highlight the black shadowing it she's for oh and suddenly you were calm you're on a plateau almost the height of a tower several stories high the plateau is like a table laying beneath a clear sky and beneath the plateau surrounding it in all directions a forest hazy with mist although whether it is actual mist or distance or recollection resting in the curve of a natural arc above you is the great copper bell half again the size of a man hanging at attention as if looking down on you and the event unfolding before you the plateau is soaked in the sun and the rock beneath you is rough and warm the sky forms a cradle around you you feel different not disembodied but you feel your body your physical contours have changed along with your surroundings and you hear a soft series of chimes like wind chimes at the sound the scene gains color and texture and if the sound is beckoning you gently forward filling your senses and though like most rolling softly in a sealed chamber and the chime coaxes you deeper into the memory you're certain it is a memory a warm one you are on the stone of the plateau your knees on the warm texture of the ground silver white shimmering like adra the plateau is formed of it glistening in the sun you can feel the heat on your skin your wrists your hands your hands are in motion weaving not thread but gathering tenderly moving along the first moment of bereft's wheel your hands are wet your hands are upon the flesh of a newborn child and you can feel the crowning of tiny heads turning in your grip its head slick wet from the womb the hands you are weaving inhabiting have done this many times and they are practiced and confident you can feel distant pains in your own head as the head emerges a stream of fluid from the womb helping the newborn slide forth and the woman's labored breathing crying out as your hands move you hear the sound of chimes clear cutting through the haze of memory you cannot see where they're coming from but the clothes and they are meant as a comfort of that you are certain coaxed by your hands every movement causing the chimes to sound again almost eagerly the child comes forth and as it does your hands are in motion weaving weaving moving along the length of a soft wet rope no an umbilical cord from the lengths from the legs of the naked one before you you are holding a small child still wet from the womb before you the child cries out its cry full of life full of soul the ringing of the chimes echo in its thoughts filling it with its welcome the soul is blurred at the edges as if you were viewing a soul from within a soul but there it is it is alive the woman before you is weeping and at her first cry her hands reach for it you surrender the child to her something you've done many times before and as your hands move the chimes echo the movement and you realize the chimes are hanging from cords on your wrist and where once they echoed in the memory they're now echoing in the child's mind as well 
The chimes are intended to welcome the child, to be its first gentle greeting into the world. A soothing sound guided by the tender motion of your wrists are helping to weave its thoughts, its per perceptions and the experience. The experience. The woman laughs with a ragged joy, laughing from a parched throat, her enormous seam soothed, but the physical demands have left her exhausted. But the child is here, the child is safe. And all atop the plateau is peaceful, car, distant, flattening out as the memory persists. With effort the scene bleeds of colour and your mind becomes your own again. There's no pull, no anchor, yet the sound of the chimes remain. As they extend in the memory, they sound here as well. And they are hanging from woven braids on the wrists of the woman before you. Even as your head is spinning from the touch of her mind, the sound of the chimes on her wrist is sharp and clear, as if coaxing you back to the real world. The woman still sits before you, but she is nothing like what you first saw. She's wearing black, shredded garments that drape over her like streamers. Her hair is streaks of black and run through with silver. Her age is almost impossible to tell. She simply feels old, like a crumbled watchtower. As she lifts her head to face you, you see that her hair is draped across the front of her face, like a veil. What you first saw of her was a mental glamour of some sort, unconscious, and you realise what you see is not what the world sees, and you are perhaps the first to see her true self. Still, you don't sense a threat from the realisation. If anything, you feel a sense of relief from the figure. You can hear her thoughts and she's glad at last to be seen. Whew, okay, that was a bit of a long one, but okay, let's see. Yes, hello. Who are you? I am seen, but the eyes of others do not remember. You were the first to see me as I am, the call stripped aside. There's a light touch on your mind, a caress, and her left hand mirrors the motion of the touch, reaching up to the air between yours. You hear the chime on her wrist softly, her hand moves as if pantomiming, resisting on your cheek at a distance, and she speaks softly and slowly. Your memories, cadence of wheels on a caravan track, fever, questions by running water, Violence in a night's campfire, arrows in the dark, and fleeing. Falling rock and cracking stone, and a storm. The storm. A storm that brushed you. Did its screaming wake you from your mind's cradle? Your memory of it is painful. Its cry is... Difficult to ignore. It's like a child. Many children crying out. Okay. Um, yes, it did. I remember that from, was it the first episode or the second one of them? No, I think it was the first episode, wasn't it, where we um, were attacked. Okay. Um, yes, the Biwak, I think it was called. A hand withdraws shyly, the chimes sound softly once again. The woman stands uncertain as if she's been sitting for some time or is too weak to bear her own weight. You notice her cheekbones are tight, her face gaunt, yet while her stance is weak, she seems determined to stand before you. You are able to see me. Almost a question. You suddenly realise she doesn't seem to know what you saw when you looked at her. The image on the plateau, yet the image was so clear, so sharp. You're surprised she doesn't feel you there. To see me is a rare gift, a watcher's gift. Okay, oh, I'm not a cipher, so I can't do that one. You know what? Yeah, I've never been able to do that with a living person, so that was interesting, apparently. So many questions, thoughts whirling like storm winds 
That storm still roars through you, deep beneath your thoughts, yet muted and secret, like an underground river. I cannot tell if it is carving new channels, or eroding what keeps your true strength buried. The fact that you could hear it at all, survive it, is something few have ever done. Your power will grow stronger with each soul you touch, as it allowed you to reach out to mine. Okay. Oh. Well, 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 we could get a new one. Okay, you know what? Yep, I'm not one to turn down new companions. Would you like to travel with us? You feel a wave of weight, gust with the strength of relief, although oddly her expression does not change. Then fear dissipates and you feel strength and certainty as if the plateau from her memory lies beneath you and a calm sky looks down on you. Cool, we've got... Okay, we're going to have to give her a better name than Grieving Mother. But, okay, you're a cipher, are you? Right, oh, how are you going to fit into this? Okay. Alright, I don't know what a cipher does. But yeah, can't get rid of rolls, obviously, because that's who we are. Ooh. I don't want to get rid of Sangi because she's got the wolf. That's like a freebie companion. Lily's the Barbarian, so she, that's obviously our tank. Healer damage, I think. Sorry, Kana, I think it's you. has got to go for now. Safe anyway. travels. Yeah, you head back to the castle. And, yeah, we're going to give her a go and see what she's like. Okay, learn of her past. Is that just by travelling around with her? Let's have a look. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, right. Ooh, you know what? Let's just see right Indeed. in on her. Okay, fine. Ooh, no idea. Oh, that's a focus. Okay. Your thoughts must flow deeply indeed. Right, you're a spellcaster. But the question is... What sort of spells are you? Right, we'll get looking into them in a bit. Oh, I can... You know what? How long have we been playing this? How long? And I've only just noticed half the quests we could have done. There's a button there to talk. Your mind comes bearing questions, creature. <sighs> right. Well, I guess we're going to have to, um, at some point, go through everybody and chat with them. Okay, so let's have a look. Yeah, you addressed me as a watcher when we met. Do you know what a watcher is? Slow chill, and for a moment it seems she's going to fade from your vision, as if she can't bear to be seen. The title came unbidden. I do not know why I spoke of it. Yet it seemed the right mantle, a familiar one. If I've given offence, forgive me, forgive me, you... You would know more than I. Okay, uh, yeah, why are you so afraid? I mean, I've not, you know, said anything. I do not know, it's an odd feeling. I do not know where it stems from. It is a word that arose when you saw me. It is said, watchers see much that others do not, and I've been hidden from the eyes of others for some time. Okay. Yeah, how come nobody else can see you? And does that mean I can send you off to do some scouting, shall we say? Their eyes see me, but their minds will not remember past the call. Okay, what's a call? My face is like the call of a newborn, hiding the face beneath. And for my body, I am able to wrap myself as a mother cradling her child. I am here as you see me. But to them, their eyes see only the cloak that I wear. A peasant mother, dirty, shabby, not worth knowing. As a watcher, 
You see more than others. To the eyes of most, I am as unseen as the spirits you share memories with. I divert the flow of their senses down a different path, to a place easily forgotten. It is not unwelcome when one does not desire the presence of others. The surface of their minds register a figure, but the memory slips away. They see a woman, but there's no desire for conversation, no desire for questions. And I have none to ask. Okay, right, well, let's just carry on. And I think at some point we're going to have to have a nice sit-down chat with everybody and see if anyone's got anything to say. Yeah. But for now, come on, there's a blacksmith here. Mm -hmm. And there might be some good weapons. At least, if not, we might be able to sell a load of stuff that we've got. Because we are carrying a lot of stuff. Where we're carrying it, I don't know. I'm assuming we've got a bag of holding or something that it's all gone in. But, hello, who are you? Ooh, okay. Well... Well, let me talk to you. Because you're not behind the counter, so... Ah, right, you're just another one of these. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. I don't know if they actually do anything, but... Yeah, they give you a nice bit of story, but... Yeah, I'm not sure what they're for. Hail, traveller. Okay. Yeah, let's see what you've got for sale. Okay, okay. First things first. Yep. Let's get selling ev no, not checking it out. I said let's sell. Because we have got a lot to sell. All this basic stuff can go. As you can see, it's not worth much on its own. But yeah, it soon adds up. Okay. And yeah, I think I'll keep one each of these for now. Just until I can decide what to do with them. And you can go. Light armor. I don't know. You know what? I can get rid of some of out. Oh, two, 240 is not too bad, actually. I'll keep two for now. You're heavy. Your medium, your medium. Right, that's fine. None of you do anything, but I mean, I do like the looks of some of them. So we'll see what they look like on at some point. I don't know where that other helmet's gone. A minute, is it? Is there a second page on any of these that I've missed? No. I don't know then. Um, no. Okay. Fine. Anywho, that's all that done. And let's have a no. Oh, I can't actually have a nose at you because, yeah. I'm in the shop at minute, so I don't know what you actually have. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, give me the money. Give me the money. And then let's have a look. Level 7th Cypher. Metal Folk. Okay, yeah. I mean, your stats aren't too bad. Okay. Stealth, yeah. You're, you're good for stealth. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Now, what we want is... Oh, bloody hell, even in here, you've got big heads. Okay, right, fine. Right. You've got a dagger and a crossbow, but you also do magic. Right, okay, you're going to be fun. So, what have you got? Light armor. Okay, that's fine because we have got light armor. No, that's heavy. There we go. Seven. Yeah, that's a little bit better for you. So... Can we enhance it at all? Constitution, I could get up. Do I want to do that? Or... No. For now, do Constitution 1, and then... Oh, actually. Cave Coral, I need some more of that. 
right okay yeah, we'll do that for now and then we can put yeah the other stuff later on thank you right switch them over weapons you've got a dagger but i mean who used to say you have to stick with the dagger you know what yeah let's give you rest resolution one-handed saber there we go you can have that and shield put your accuracy down but then again having a shield is mm, i don't know if yeah shields are going to be useful because you're not really meant to be up there fighting but then again there's nothing saying you can't do magic while holding a shield. There we go. And your crossbow. Let's have a look. 21 to 31 pierce damage. Okay. Nope. And what about the gun? Slightly better damage. But... No, it's very slow. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. I think we'll stick with what we've got for now. Right, okay. That's that. We've got that one. Now, do we want to put something on your head or not? Oh, um. Okay. I mean, it looks all right. What about you? Oh, okay. That. To be honest. It's quite. Yeah. Okay. Five. Well, um. Nah, I don't like that one. Oh, I can't see that one. Alright, never mind. Right. Okay, you know what? Back in a minute once I've uh, finished doing whatever I need to do with her. Actually, there's nothing I need to do with her because I don't have anything for her. So, okay. She can stay like that for now. And, oh, there's no hair physics. Boo. Okay. Let's go and Gods buy. Keep you. Shut up. Let's go and um, see if there's anything I can buy. Okay, I've gone through and there are a few things that, as you can see at the bottom, we're going to be getting. Some more lock picks, a ham and chisel because we might need it, crow, a, well, a crowbar or a pry bar depending on where you're from, grappling hook, yeah, and someone to boost up me chanter, although he's not with us now, but I'm taking it anyway, and yeah, some boots for my priest, so, not priest, sorry, um, pal. Oh, Paladin. Actually, I don't know if I've got a Paladin. What? What are you classed as? I can't remember. I just assumed it was for you. But we'll see. I'll take it anyway because I'm sure if they're there, there must be somebody we can pick up who, you know, can use them at some point. But yeah, there's also some nice weapons up here. I wouldn't mind getting tall grass for Rose. And the Owls of St. Rumbolt for Lily. But, yeah, price is a little bit steep. So, we're not getting them yet. Hopefully, though, we will later on. Yeah, he's priest. He's not going to be able to wear them. Fine. Oh, we've actually found somebody. Okay, hello. Just ventured into town. I'm about dry on some of my stocks. But you're welcome to have a look. See, yeah, okay. Um, apparently, I've noticed that you've been burned. Okay, by the flame. How bad does it look? Just say it. I know you'll tell me straight. Um, yeah, who cares how it looks? What matters is if she's okay. 
Okay. Fine. I've been keeping an eye on a drake's nest. Okay. The beast stayed just long enough to lay a clutch and moved on. Thank the Sky Mother it wasn't a full-grown dragon. Fresh eggs are much more useful than the ones that get passed between merchants or left in nests for weeks or more. And that clutch looked to be at its peak. The thought I'd see about getting an egg, but I didn't realise so many of them had already hatched. Or that young ones were so territorial. Okay, what's special about these eggs? They're one of the strongest tonics known to Kith. If you leave out Carol Golan, of course. Not saying anyone should take that. But dragon eggs are known to make Kith bold. Purposeful. Some even think they'll protect from yet yeah, the storm. All I know is everyone's pining after potions made from dragon eggs. But the damn roads can't reach none of my suppliers, so I'm stuck with whatever I can scrounge up. Oh, really? Am I really gonna do this? You know what? Fine. You know, we haven't got anything else going on. I sure hope you're not leading me on. I don't think I could stand getting burned again. If you really mean to go after it, I'd certainly pay you. Just remember, big as they are, dragon eggs are fragile, and there's a, a lot more I can do with a whole one. Hello. Okay. Do you know anything about the ruins? Hard to throw a stone in the wild without knocking over someone's sacred adrapillars. Smart travellers avoid it. But if you're really on sightseeing, Beedma could point you in the right direction. He keeps up the little temple on the northwest edge of town. Okay. I'll have a look at that in a bit. Right, what have you got for sale then? Actually, you've got some good stuff. Depending on, yeah, what I actually need. So... Remember you're here. I'll probably forget in about five minutes, but you know, we'll try and remember. Oh, okay. Um, don't know what I've just walked in on, but the quest just updated. All right, give me a second. Ah, okay. It might have just been a bit delayed updating. Okay, fine. Hello. Okay, you're n bloody hell. You're another shot. Yeah, okay, what's in the collapsed tower? It's collapsed, nothing. A few hides on stretching racks and the tallow stench. Always grumbling about the rest of the keep's dust, just like the foul lady who tried to hold it. That's a bard at the inn who'll tell you the whole story. Okay, might go and have a look at that. Ooh, exceptional, you say? Okay, but it's light. That's the only problem. Hello, oh, you have got some belts. So... Re Regen! Yes, we're having that. And I'll take you as well. Bloody hell. What's the regen like on you? One... For every three seconds. Okay, it's not exactly huge, but I think putting that on Lily. Oh, I've got to buy it first, don't I? Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, yeah, we'll take them. And okay, you know what? Let's just come out of here. And Lily. Oh, you've already got a belt on. What's that one do? Healing bonus. No, no. You have regem. And... What are you? Crit damage taken down. Okay. Think. Yep. Aloth can have that one. And... Oh. Now, is that... That's healing received. Okay, that's fine. I'll give that one yeah, to you, Sangi. There we go. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Well. 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to unlock it now with these there, but if you come back at night, we might be able to sneak in there and see what's going on, because I think there's something more going on in there than he's letting on. I just want to find her. Surely even you can understand that. Okay, I was just going around. We're decent folk, my lord. Perhaps you should leave and check the wilds. Okay, so that's Lord What's-His-Face. Right, you're sick. Okay, we've got some with names. But... Okay, you know what? Let's just quickly check out these ones who've got names. Probably Hello. more quests. First time, normally I'd have a song ready, but I haven't quite worked out this tune yet. I'm writing some chants about the founding of this inn. Say, you interested in the story? I haven't finished the chant, but I could tell you about it. Okay. So the first bit is basically, yeah, there was a fortification here. It was attacked. And using the rubble and everything from that, the ones who took it over decided the first thing they were going to do was not build a hospital or... A medical center or housing the first thing they're gonna do is build this in so okay and let's see what else okay not really too much to the of interest unless you're you know worrying about the history and backstory but basically yeah they came in there was lots of infights and lots of wars people died and that's about it really do we know you Okay, thank you, friend. You've given me another chance, and I mean to make the most of it. I've been telling everyone around here how you helped me. Okay, apparently we helped him out at some point. Sorry, I don't remember that. All right, let's go and speak to Lord whatever his name is, Harold. My child is out there. Do they not understand? My lord, we're doing everything we can. Unfortunately, these villagers... Beasts take them all. I don't care how you do it, but find her. Okay. Um, yeah, your kid's missing, apparently. Yes, Lady Alice. My daughter. I've asked around, but nobody in this mud hole has any concerns beyond their swine. They turn my men away like beggars and seem downright pleased to be of no use. But you, you're not one of my soldiers. And you look like you're used to getting your hands dirty, if you don't mind my saying so. If you find her, tell her I won't be upset with her. She can come back and all will be well. I just want to make sure she's safe. Nothing in the world is more important to me. Elise, of course. All right. Yeah, what does she look like? Young woman bears more resemblance to her mother than to me. She has urban hair and a delicate well-bred features okay she must be 28 or 29 you don't even know how old your daughter is she's okay well what do you know about a disappearance then we'd stopped for a few days on our fourth evening here i was making plans to continue she was feeling unwell and went to bed when i retired a couple of hours later i found that she'd vanished none of men seen her go and no one at the inn knew where she was. Since then, my people have been combing the village, but were yet to find a clue. It was a stop along the way. However, she took ill shortly before our arrival, so it seems prudent to allow her a few days to recover. Okay, and where's this rest? She's reached the age where it is prudent for her to marry. Given this, the just... Given this legacy business, I can't let her fertile years slip by, nor do I want her womb to fester in the presence of so many hollowborn. Okay, so intelligent or survival. Yeah, there's something going on here. Let's go with intellect. Yeah, it seems to be more potential suitors in other places. 
You think I haven't considered that? Arranging a super match is difficult. The best prospects for my child is in Eden's Wreck. Okay, wouldn't it have been easier to go along the coast? If I thought that, I wouldn't be slogging through the forest, would I? The main roads are clogged with people fleeing one way or the other to try to escape Waden's legacy. It would be difficult for a caravan like mine to pass without instant. At the time, it seemed prudent to move quietly along the back roads. Okay. And yeah, where's the rest of your family? Lady Harold is ill-suited for travel. And unfortunately... Alice has few other close relatives. My sister and her husband, her aunt and uncle, have been visiting for the past three months. And as for siblings, she has not. My wife has only given birth to Hollowborn since her. Okay. Right, back to your daughter. Okay, nothing else there that I can ask. Fine. A petty, small-minded man, just like the rest of them around here. I've been paying him an honest fee for board and bed, and yet he can't be bothered to stir himself to concern for my Alice. All right, okay, let's... Yeah, let's get on with searching for her. So, you know what? We came here to try and get rid of a few quests, and instead... We seem to have gained more. Oh, okay. I was just doing a bit of exploring. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, what are you talking about? Some old friends from Defiance Bay are looking for me. We're not exactly friends anymore. If you catch my drift, I'm just trying to lie low. My own business. Know what I mean? All right, all right. She raises her hand. My friend here thinks you could maybe help us out. Of course we could. Right, fine. Now, I'm sure a busy woman, so I'll make it worth your time. She slips you a few coins. Just go take a look around town. Come back and let me know if the coast is clear or if you see any suspicious figures. Okay. <laughs> I'll report back if I find anyone skulking in a corner, cackling manically. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, you seem pretty sus yourself, especially with them hoods on. I may have got myself in trouble with some powerful people, powerful criminals. I suppose it was bound to happen eventually. I'm a thief by trade and it's hard to do my kind of business in the city without crossing them. I'm now trying to put some distance between us. Okay, yeah, let's go with the cackling manically. Okay. Just more. Right, anyone else up here wants, you know... Oh. What are you two doing in here? Nah, you're nothing. Fine. And, oh, hello. Let's just close the door. And go Nice and, and quiet. I mean, I'm not expecting them to be trapped, but you never know. A simple test. Okay. What have we got? Ooh, bounding missile and some silver. Thank you. I can do that. Good, you do that then. Yes, 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 that's fine. That's settled. Okay, and uh, not too much, but fine, that'll do. Right, you know what? With all that said and done, I think we'll end it there for today and next week we will finish scouting out here try and find who's following them see what else is going on try and find his daughter and god knows what else and at some point hopefully find the ruins so i hope you'll join me back here next week for that but in the meantime i've been san katie for this has been Pillars of Eternity. Thank you so much for joining me. Look after each other. And until next time, goodbye.